So one of my first volunteering experiences was at a food packaging event to help feed the reported 75,000 people considered food insecure in my community, according to my regional health district. As a vocal student activist in my community through leading organized school walkouts, I wanted to combine my environmental advocacy experience with science in order to find a more sustainable way to support the members of my community who lack physical, social, and economic access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food, which meets their dietary needs to live a healthy and active life. Despite advances in agricultural technology and production methods, we are experiencing a global food crisis in which one in nine people are considered undernourished. Projected statistics for 2030 dictate that there will be an estimated 840 million people hungry. On top of the staggering statistic, a variety of environmental issues are already plaguing our system for food production. Arable land is shrinking and will not be able to support our exponentially increasing population. Already, overpopulation has contributed to drought, soil loss, our changing climate, and multiple forms of pollution. To move forward as a society, we must answer the question of how we can feed all of these people while protecting and preserving our environment so that it can continue to produce our food. As an ambassador at the Institute for Systems Biology, I've spent the past year researching how to, to combat food insecurity and answer that difficult question. Systems biology, which cultivates cross-disciplinary skills for solving complex problems, has the capability to revolutionize science, transform human health, and ensure environmental sustainability in order to promote wellness for humans and the planet. My work with ISB's Project Feed 1010, named for 10 to the 10th power, indicating the 10 billion people that will con consist of the 2050 population, has been devoted to a new type of sustainable agriculture called aquaponics. Named for the intersection between aquaculture, which is fish farming, and hydroponics, which is growing plants in water, Aquaponics combines these two methods to consist of a more sustainable system for food production. This more cost-effective method of production is sustainable and increases the efficacy of biological interactions for food production by combining the ecosystems of rivers and our fields. So I'll be describing the nutrient film technique form of aquaponics, also known as an NFT system. So an NFT system starts with a fish tank, of course, where aquatic organisms live. As debris builds up in the tank from algae, leftover food, and fish excretion, it will leave the tank through solid filters, which consist of snails. There's also a biofilter, a stage where bacteria are in action and where biological filtration occurs. Lastly, grow beds sit atop of the tank, which feature a soilless medium such as grow stones, expanded clay, or gravel. By working together, the plants, fish, and bacteria help regulate ammonia, pH, and the other chemical compounds that work in a system model so that the system stays healthy. The goal of biological filtration in aquaponics is to neutralize ammonia and nitrate toxicity, which harms the symbiotic relationship between plants, fish, and bacteria. Aquaponics uses biological filtration via the nitrogen cycle. The steps are as follows. First, fish excrete ammonia in their waste. Nitrosomonas bacteria then is able to convert ammonia into nitrite. Nitrobacter bacteria then convert nitrite into nitrate, which plants are able to uptake to use to grow as nutrients, which helps purify the water. Aquaponic systems can be integrated in communities in a variety of ways, including classrooms or school greenhouses, libraries and community gardens as an educational tool to teach about different biological cycles. The produce grown by these systems can then be donated to food banks or school cafeterias in order to actively help fight food insecurity. While food production is increased by a variety of factors, controlling where it's produced and who has access to it, such as technology, environmental conditions, human labor, and nutrient input, aquaponic systems can be 
engineered with cost-effective materials, be built in a variety of different sizes, and allow for precise control of water chemistry and the growing environment. This allows them to pose an agricultural method and solution that can increase the availability of food without dependency on geographical location. The COVID-19 pandemic has only exacerbated the food insecurity that my aquaponics projects have been designed to alleviate. As unemployment and financial hardship increase, so too do the number of people that go hungry and lack consistent access to food. Solutions to hunger that are sustainable and simplistic are now more important than ever. Even though we are in the midst of a global healthcare crisis, through sustainable agriculture with aquaponics in our communities, we can still take steps towards achieving greater wellness for Earth and humanity.